Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, can I talk to you, Tilas? Um, because we're going to go to Cindy's launch, um, second segment, the, uh, the last part of it, uh, please just signal me uh, like three minutes earlier at second segment so that I introduce uh, the launch and then we talk about the book. After, I guess it's eight minutes a segment, after five minutes and then you just signal me three. Okay, so we can see the launch. No, go second segment. Got three minutes, yeah, yeah, launch, yeah, what? So I will be saying the launch will be on the 19th. Or no, was because, on the 19th. Yes, was on the, on the 19th. 19th. Yes. And then you will please tell us where to get these books. Directly from me. Directly um, from you. Yeah, at this point in time. Okay. Welcome, we're getting an HIV today here, yeah. here, oh sorry. Okay, sorry, three, two. Welcome, we're getting an HIV today. You're watching HIV today, and I'm Sanj, and I'm Dr. Gomete Pele, as your host, Usimpio Gomete. Today we are speaking to Cindy Pavic, an HIV activist, a lady who does a lot uh, in this community. So, Zanje, is there a Cindy? Stay tuned. My surname is pronounced Pavasic, as in Jurassic, Pavasic. 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 Okay. We're now doing after the pump, Yeah, just the introduction. We just want to pick up from the introduction and then we can run. Pavasic. In three, two. I am Bugali. Today we have Usisi. Oh, sorry. Today we have Cindy uh, Pavasic, who is an HIV activist and who will also be telling us her life and her story and how she got to write a book because later on we'll be introducing her book. Batuba uh, Manjage, let's come and welcome her. Hi Cindy, how are you? Hi, good morning, thank you very much. Uh, how are you today? Very well, thank I'm you. I'm very well, thank you. Please tell us about Cindy. Well, I have been around for quite a while and um, I live my life to the fullest. I have started a non-profit organization for people living with HIV and AIDS, and I hope to get people aware that okay. HIV and AIDS is not a death sentence. Okay, okay. And then, Cindy, tell us more about how Cindy found out about her being HIV positive and, you know, the whole road in, 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 in her being an HIV activist. I took a partner, my long-term partner at the time, was ill. Okay. I took him to hospital after about the third bout of stomach cramps. Okay. I took him in and he then decided to have an HIV test. Okay. And I'm sitting thinking, well, you know, why an HIV test? All you've got is stomach cramps. Little knowing that he actually knew his status prior okay. to that point in time. And it came back HIV positive, and a week later I went and tested myself, knowing full well that the possibility of me being HIV positive was there, and it came back positive. Okay, and how, and how did you deal with the news? You know, your first blow, um, how was that like? Quite funnily enough, it wasn't as much of a blow because I had a week to prepare myself for the result okay. of being positive. But the fact that the person that disclosed my partner's status to him in hospital, did it in public, that was kind of a blow. Okay. That was very unprofessional as far as I'm concerned. So I probably use that more as attack and take, I took a stand on that actually, okay. rather than taking a stand on my own HIV positive status. Okay, okay. And then you, we know that HIV is more or less stigmatized as the black, um, you know, disease or the, you <laughs> I know, love it. I, the gay <laughs> disease. 
uh, how, how did people react, especially, you know, the close friends and family, uh, when you first, you know, told them, before the coming out? Let's, let's talk about the family reaction or just the community that you, the people you were amongst. Well, people generally assumed, as you rightly say, it was a black and gay disease. Yes. And it, wasn't ne it was neither here nor there for me, okay. personally, until I was HIV positive. But there was always that them. Yes. People referred to them. It wasn't a white disease. And little did they realize just how many white people in their own community, friends and family, are HIV positive today. Yes, as far as the stigma is concerned, it took me six years to go public about my status. It wasn't overnight because of the perceived stigma that is attached to it. And quite honestly, what people say my, behind my back, I do not know, but I've got the most amazing support. Okay. Friends, family, the works. Uh, I was actually taking my mother back to the airport when she said to me out of the blue in the car, so are you HIV positive? And she'd been um, visiting me at hospital and what have you, and I said, yes, and that was that. I've had the most amazing support. Yes, and then what, what I, I hear you say it, it took you six years to, to disclose, but what gave you that, that courage to say, you know, I want to go out there and, and disclose my status? And how was it like, you know, first disclosing? Because from a personal experience, I know it's not easy. How was that like for you? Fortunately, I have a big mouth <laughs> <laughs> for a start. And yes, it wasn't easy because people living with the virus are, are probably their own worst enemies. That We stigmatize ourselves. We're perpetrating that stigma by not disclosing our status as far as I'm concerned. The, the people that don't want to be around me aren't my friends anyway. But when I disclosed my status, it, it was a relief. It was an absolute relief. What happened was I had somebody that sponsored my, my website and I thought, because I'd, I'd wanted to get out there because people don't have access to information. And I didn't have access. I had to find everything out on Google. My professional doctors, medical people didn't give me the information. I was never, to this day, I've not been pre or post counseled. It was never offered to me. So and I realized that people without the information that I can get have access to it. So this kind of pushed me in that direction. And yeah, it's just been, I, I've just gone forward f since then. I pushed my hand on the, closed my eyes, put my hand on the <laughs> push button, enter, and put my website and, and to the world. Went, yeah. and, and, and how was it like, you know, the, the, the first time you said it? Did, it? did it give you a sort of a relief or some sort? Or did you like bite yourself and go, Cindy, what have you done? No, I, I, it was, it was <laughs> upper, absolute relief. It was it was the most amazing feeling because now I didn't have to try um, because I was at one point diagnosed with cancer and I got away with my HIV status because everybody thought I had cancer so I could hide the HIV status okay and it was such a relief not to have to lie about it anymore okay. or hide it um, no speculation the speculation is gone so what what have your best shot. <laughs> Give me your best shot now. And 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 how, I know that you 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 have a foundation of which we will be later mm -hmm. on speaking. But I, I think a lot of people know you from a very huge advert. And we we see that you work with um, with kids. How did you get about working with kids? And and what were the objectives? It's not so much kids that I'm working with. Who I'm actually targeting is people the working community okay. that have basically left their jobs because they haven't wanted to disclose their status, which they don't have to do, or they've been retrenched because they can no longer work. And the projects that I've put in place is to upskill people so that they can, can get back into the workplace so they can go home and look after their children again. Okay. That is basically where I'm focusing. There's a lot of people doing a lot of work for the for the youth, for the youngsters, for the for the babies, but nobody's really looking at the working class, and it's us that have to actually look after the oh, people okay. below us, and that is where I'm coming from. Yes, and and how is their response to you? I mean, you're a white lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You are referring, I'm assuming, from the black community. Yes. I have got the most amazing reaction from them. 
I generally shave my head bald in, during the um, AIDS season, as I put it. And the most amazing reaction comes from the black community because they all say, thumbs up and go for it, good, well done, keep going. They love it. Okay. So I know there's, I know there's, there's acceptance and there's, I think it's cool. Okay. Mbugelwa <laughs> Mosakayo, I'm sitting here with Cindy and we're talking about the life of Cindy. We'll later be on be seeing um, her book and her book launch. Stay with us. <laughs>